نوایت وار با نت اوزلان تو خلوتی راد نس حسب الله حول ولا قوت الا بالله العظيم مدد صاحب الصيف وی ار اسکینگ سپورت فروم اور شیخ صاحب الصيف شیخ عبد الكریم الکبریسی ربانی to send us something that is going to benefit us not something that is just going to be malayani not something that is not going to benefit us something that is going to benefit us in these days until judgment day if you want to hear you're going to hear listen carefully you don't want to hear you want to go to sleep get up and go to sleep this is not a place for sleeping This is that kind of association. This is that kind of jamaat. I let you sleep. Just don't sleep in front. Just don't sleep here. Sleep over there. Acceptable. Tariqatana sohba fil hayri min jamiyat. Our tariqat, it is based on association, on sohbat. And the goodness comes out from that sohbat. This is the peer of our tariqat, Shah Naqshbandi is saying. This is what our shaykhs, they are saying, this is what we are repeating. Our way is based on association. Do you have association? Do you have association with your shaykh? Do you have association with each other? You don't have association with each other, you don't have association with a shaykh. That time, what are you going to gain from the sohbat? Meaning, you're not putting your ego down in front of your shaykh. You're not putting your ego down in front of others. That time, you can be in the sohbat of the Prophet ﷺ. Nothing will get through to you too. You're just going to listen with your ego. That's all. That time, we may earn the title of a munafiq. The stubbornness and the arrogance that comes. <coughs> we had a question, somebody asking. Thinking about what we said last week. About lifting of the veils. And what when you lift your veils, can you go back to that situation when the veils are going to cover you again? Right? And what's the other part of your question? Yeah, that's what I said how to be cautious to prevent that from happening and what's the other part? How, to know if the veil has been how do you know if your veil has been lifted? I don't want to talk too much about this in theoretical, conceptual, academic terms. We speak very simply because this is the way that our Sheikh is speaking, very simple. For everyone to understand, there is not going to be any doubt. But in the simplicity of his words, you can go as deep as you want, as high as you want. So, talking about the veils. And what's the first part of the question? How to know if your veil has been lifted and how to prevent that veil from coming down again to you. Simply, correct? But what is a veil? What is the veil? What is this covering, preventing us from coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the Holy Prophet and to our Shaykh? What is this veil? Simple. If we are concentrating on our ego, on our shaitan, 
on this dunya and on this hawa, our desires, those are the ones who will make and they will manufacture these veils. So what is a veil? To put it very simply, all the bad characteristics of the ego especially, because we're concentrating on that, that is preventing you from coming closer to your Lord. Bad characteristics. So now, you ask the question, how do we know if our veil has been lifted? Is that a very simple question and it's a very simple answer. How are you going to know? <laughs> You're going to check yourself. That wrong characteristic, that bad characteristic that I have been looking at, that I have identified, that I'm trying to get rid of. Is it under control or not? Has it been lifted or not? Or am I still a slave to my ego? Correct? Have you gotten rid of it or not? Do you know what it is? To know what it is, to identify it, to look at it carefully, that is a marifat in these days. That is a hidden knowledge, hidden wisdom in these days. Because majority, they're not entering into tariqat to know how to get rid of the evil characteristics. They enter into tariqat to be acknowledged that they are holy and they are a saint. Not in this jamaat. In this jamaat, the jamaat of Sahib al-Saif, we are concentrating on looking into our ego and trying to get rid of it. If we are still not understanding what it is that we want to get rid of, that we cannot get rid of it, then <coughs> there is going to be a veil that is going to stay there forever. You have to be then that time in consultation with a sheikh, you have to look and you have to understand and he has to hold a mirror to you. Does it matter what kind of mirror? Does it matter what he's going to show to reflect? Some days he's going to make it nice. Some days he's going to make it very real. But he's going to show you yourself. Once you know that, you accept it, what are you going to do? Are you going to try to get rid of it or not? You can deny it like shaitan is denying. You can become stubborn and arrogant, like shaitan is being stubborn and arrogant. Your end is just not going to be so good at that time. But you understand, and you're looking. You're trying to get rid of it sincerely, but you fall back into the weakness, back and forth, back and forth you're going. That time, because you're holding on to him tightly, He will bring you to a higher station very easily that you yourself, you cannot do. That because you've taken that one step towards Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we will take 10 steps to you. This is what here now we are concentrating on. Don't think, oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know, yeah, uh, ego and hawa and shaitan and nafs and dunya and this. Very easy. You're going to say, you enumerate. No, it's not going to be so easy. Because to understand those things, that is another hidden wisdom there. To understand when someone is going to speak to you, to say that, look at these characteristics, you have them get rid of them. Majority of the people, they're not going to accept that. They say, who are you? This is not tariqat. Tariqat is to speak nicely to each other all the time. Why are you yelling at me? Why are you being harsh? Why are you this? Why are you that? But you're questioning others instead of questioning yourself. No. Tariqat is to prepare us for the afterlife. Before you are being questioned, we're going to question ourselves. We're going to question ourselves. 
this is what we're going to do. And this is what we're trying to do. Inshallah, you understand? If you know that it has been lifted, if you are trying hard to get rid of this bad characteristic, laziness, laziness, so many they are lazy. You're trying hard. Help is going to come to you. You're not doing anything. You're sitting there. Then prepare. In this way, it is acceleration. Everything is accelerated. Because right now we are trying to live as we see what our ahirat is going to be. You refuse to change, then you're going to suffer here. You're going to suffer hereafter. You're changing, you're going to feel the blessings here. And definitely you're going to feel the blessings in the hereafter. So you see, you're trying to get rid of it. You have gotten rid of it. Good. Move to the next one. Move to the next one. Move to the next one. You're going to feel everything is good. I'm running, but I have a very high opinion of myself. I don't like anyone to say anything negative about me. I don't like anyone to snicker at me, to laugh at me, to point fingers at me, to say anything bad. I don't like that. I don't want that. And anyone who's saying it, I'm getting very upset. Who are we? Well, then that is a very bad, very big characteristic, very huge veil that we now have to lift. Because who are we? Who are we concerned with? Allah, His Prophet, our Shaykh. Are we concerned about everyone? Who cares? Who is caring? As believers, we should care what our Lord is thinking of us. Oh, I don't like it. People make fun of me all the time. Half of the time, so many people who think that people are making fun of them all the time, they're in delusion and illusion anyway. Because you enter into that, once you hook on to that, then you're going to find everything to validate, to make whatever your assumption, whatever way that you're thinking is true. So you're going to find ways to say, aha, you see, this is happening. Therefore, this is true. That's why this is happening. You're going to look for everything there, just to make your theory to work. Someone from outside is just going to shake his head and say, look, don't go crazy. Shaitan is making you to go crazy. Don't. No, but this happened because of this, because of this. Anyone can think that way. You are free. But not in this way. If you're not walking this path, you can think any way that you want. But when you're walking in this path and you're still retaining your egoistic characteristic like that, that's not going to be too good for you. If you're still holding on to that, we are going to suffer because we're not changing. Because here, we are learning the way of the Holy Prophet learning the way of the awliya Allah. The things that we are speaking about is not just today or last year or last 10 years. It has been going on for 1,400 years. It has been going on and we're speaking about wisdoms and teachings thousands of years before that. We're talking about teachings from the time of Adam salam. We're talking about teachings and wisdoms all the way from the day of promises. From the day of Qalubala. And that was a day between Allah and His Khalifa. Nothing else was in existence. That was a day that time and its place was hidden from everything in creation except between Allah and Hazrat Insan. We're speaking of wisdoms from that time, of a time before time. So if you're holding on just to your little ego, that in reality we are nothing in this world, we are a spot in this 
planet and this planet is a spot in this universe and this universe is one of billions and billions of universes forever expanding Allah creating so we should stop making idols of ourselves become humble that way we will learn inshallah may Allah forgive me and bless you this much is enough al-fatiha